Hi, welcome to the Paradox Generator build. At the end of this part one, we're going to get you to this point in the Paradox Generator development. Now the purpose of this Paradox Generator is to show generator effects that aren't accounted for by classical theory, even my theory, new electromagnetism. My theory accounts for everything that moves in linear motion, including magnets. But uh, last year, we built the Paradox 3, completely 3D printed, and it produced voltages that I can't explain right now. It's classical theory can't explain the voltage. Now the problem with this, this stacking it vertically is it's very difficult. There's a magnet on the top and the bottom of the ring. That's a copper ring set in a 3D printed ring here. And you have a magnet on the top and the bottom, magnet on the top and the bottom, and the magnets are opposite pole on top and bottom of the magnet. That red means it's south facing out. Green means it's north facing out. Okay, this, this generator produces voltage, and, and I can't explain, I can't match with the models the amount of voltage it generates. Um, now, one of the interesting things about this is it uses a RF nano to take the measurements. There is a tiny microvolt circuit that bumps up the power for a D to A converter, and this version transmits the voltage uh, through RF and is picked up by a computer. Now, one of the, uh, the reason why I did that is I wouldn't have to run brush assemblies. Okay, but I'm now I'm kind of concerned that maybe this was coupling energy into the system and I was measuring its own. So now we're going to do it with a standard brush type generator. And I've decided that we're going to mount oh, this whole thing sideways. And we're going to make this new version so we can change and scale and easily change out the types of aperture or the armatures. Because we're not only going to be retesting the Paradox 3, we're going to be testing the Paradox 3 with multiple different types of armatures, size of magnets, with and without a magnets. And then we're also going to be redoing the Paradox 2 uh, because I didn't actually put numbers to the Paradox 2. I just assumed I understood how it worked. I didn't. Okay, so we're going to also have to retest all the Paradox 2. And that means we need something that we can change out the armatures pretty quickly and something that's going to allow us to uh, get the voltages off using a brush assembly rather than trying to do an RF nano. Okay, and, um, and also something that will allow us to get a much more precision alignment between the parts. Because there is a little bit of wobble with this thing, and then that's, you can see that in the voltage. So I want to get rid of the wobble. Now the way this is going to work is there's going to be, these are changeable, we'll be, they'll be pinned in when we're at, the, at a particular, and then this will be a stepper motor. Stepper motor is actually going, uh, it's going to be driving a shaft, and on the shaft are going to be bearings. I'm actually going to have two on there. I'll be using a non-conductive shaft. This is just for demonstration. And we're going to run the wires to these bearings. So we're going to have a positive and negative bearing here. They are going to actually transfer the measurement out. So, okay, and that is going to sit, be driven by our motor on one end, and that's going to sit in a bearing assembly, and there's going to be brass uh, fangs that are going to hold these in place and allow us to take the voltage off for measurement. Well, they're not spaced properly right now. There we go. Okay, so then we'll be able to transfer the voltage out to a microvolt sensitive oscilloscope that is going to then give us the measurements of what the generator produces for all the different variations that we're going to run over this. Now I haven't developed, the only part I have not developed yet are the actual armature and the shaft. That has, still has to be developed. This took me a while because I was hemming and hawing over my two week vacation of exactly how to configure it. Should I do the stack up like the classical vertical or should I do a more complicated build like this? And once I got the ideas down, things fell into place pretty quickly. So, um, I mean, this took longer than I thought to get to this point, but that's only because of all the decision making and, you know, how do I make it? How do I come up with a reasonably simple way to align it that an average person can do? And I came up with a pretty simple way. You'll see in the video as it progresses, a very simple way to align all this so that an average person uh, should be able to follow in the footsteps here. The only thing I would recommend differently is to get much better machined little triangles here. These are really awful. I had to shim, shim them, but that's what I had on my shelf. Uh, too lazy to go down to the hardware store, but I probably may end up swapping them out in the future. So, and I tried to minimize the amount of 3D printed parts, uh, only where they're absolutely necessary. 
obviously the armature is going to be all 3D mounted, uh, 3D printed parts. So anyway, let's get on to the starting from the beginning of building the Paradox Generator uh, test set. 